Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's discussion about the 2019 film Knives Out. I'm Michelle Hickey, the director of Film and Paper Club, and we are a community of creatives who love discussing movies, television, books, and eating snacks while we do so. If that sounds like your idea of a great time, give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of our movie discussions that we share here every week. I don't think that I'm actually going to be spoiling who did it in this whodunit conversation, but just in case, if you don't want any spoilers, be sure to watch the movie before proceeding with this discussion. Knives Out was released in November 2019 which for me was significant because I believe it was one of, if not the last movie that I have seen in a movie theater. I have a really clear memory of going to see this movie. My husband had a few vacation days he had left to use at the end of the year, so he took off from work on a Friday. We went to go see this movie on a whim, and I went into it really not knowing much. And when I came out of the theater, I was just a ball of joy. I thought that this is one of the best films that I had seen that year. I still feel like it is one of the best films that has come out in the last few years. I know it wasn't nominated for Best Picture or anything, but to me, this movie checked so many boxes. One of the things that I loved most about Knives Out was, was its inventiveness. It felt like a movie I had seen a million times before. So it had that comfortability, but at the same time, it felt like I have never seen anything like this. And anytime you can make your audience feel that way, you know you've done something good. Before we jump into the discussion, let me know in the comments. A lot of us haven't really been to a movie in a couple years in the theater. Let me know what is the last movie that you saw in the theater before the pandemic. This mystery whodunit tale has been done again and again. But what I love is that Ryan Johnson, the writer and director of this film, thought, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to do this anyway. And it's going to be awesome. He really sets the tone out of the gate in those first establishing shots. We see a quintessential old house in the fog. We move to the interior of the house where we're seeing ornate wallpaper and walls of books and statues and giant oil paintings. That is until we land on that shot of the mug. And at that point we know, okay, this is gonna be different. I think one of the obvious things that makes this movie feel so fresh is the comedy. Are the jokes about Twitter and social media, and influencer culture. Nugget of... Flam. Oh, yeah, Flam, your skincare company. Sorry. I forgive you. Yeah, it's skincare, but it promotes a total lifestyle. Self-sufficiency with an acknowledgement of human need. That's Flam. And of course, my favorite joke in the whole movie about Hamilton. Linda really likes her work ethic. Immigrants, we get the job done. I, From Hamilton. Oh, Hamilton. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I saw it at the public. Oh. As an aside, that line to me is a brilliant use of exposition because not only do we get a joke out of it, but that paints a very clear picture of who this guy is. The fact that he name drops the public, which is the theater where Hamilton was first performed off-Broadway. It shows that this guy is... Uh, is pretentious, he wants to come off like he's cool, and we're able to get all of that in that one line, and of course, by his delivery. Speaking of this interview-style introduction to the characters, I don't know if Ryan Johnson did this intentionally, but in this last rewatch, I had the thought that, okay, this feels really familiar, where even though it's not in the documentary style that we see in Modern Family and in The Office and in Parks and Rec, he's still using that methodology of letting us meet these characters by having them be interviewed. And I love that he brought that modern element in, but in a very subtle way. He didn't actually 
film it as if he was a documentary crew. But we still got the questions, we still got the answers, and we still were able to learn so much about this cast of characters in a very compelling way. One of the other ways that Ryan Johnson was able to take a contemporary issue and fold it into this film was by focusing on this topic of immigration. Now, immigration is uh, not a new topic or a new issue by any means, but I felt like it was a very intentional choice to highlight that in this movie. And of course, striking that really good balance between comedy and having this real kind of serious awareness around this issue. In thinking about all of the jokes that we see about technology, there's one that also really stands out to me. Our inspector, Benoit Blanc, is to me a representative kind of of the uh, old guard of a murder mystery. He dresses in these very traditional clothes. The way that he speaks is very old-timey. The way that he operates is very old-timey. We don't really see him do anything that's very modern until late in the film when we see him waiting in a car and see him pull out his phone and listen to music. And the fact that that is comedic means that that Ryan Johnson did a really good job of establishing that doing something like this is very out of character for this guy. It's the thing that is making this little snapshot so funny. And this film is just a series of these little touches and little moments and little jokes and the writing is so smart. Many of the jokes are very subtle, just like solving a mystery. He wants you to be paying attention to every single detail. And when I rewatched this film, I really wanted to come to this discussion with some sort of profound conclusion about why this movie works. I thought that there must be something that I missed Uh, in the first few viewings in the movies and then watching it at home afterwards. But I, I couldn't come up with anything. And what I ended up landing on was that this movie hit that perfect balance. And it's, I think it's as simple as that. It's combining the old and the new. And in thinking about the new, I was trying to, uh, imagine that I was watching this movie, you know, 20 years from now, would some of those jokes, you know, about Twitter or even seeing phones or, you know, headphones in, is that going to look archaic 20 years in the future? But I think that this movie has so many classic elements in it, and it's just a story that is told so well. I think it's going to hold up. So let me know in the comments, am I missing something? Or do you think that The success of this movie is simply Ryan Johnson's ability to create this perfect recipe of combining all the right elements to tell a traditional murder mystery story mixed in with just the right amount of modern day elements. This film really inspired me creatively. I remember coming out of that movie theater and thinking, wow, this guy just brought a breath of fresh air to something that has been done a million times before. How can I do something like that? So for this week's creative exercise, I'd like for you to choose a story or a trope that has been done to death. And if you're feeling like there's a story out there that you're just getting really sick of, and for me, I hate to say this, but which I'm sorry to say is kind of how I feel about Cinderella at this point, like, all right, how many times are we going to do this same movie and even call it Cinderella? So if you're feeling that way, if you're feeling like just so, so uh, annoyed, I think that you're on the right track. Take out a notebook or a sketchbook and allow yourself to imagine how can you reinvent an old story with a fresh perspective or a new twist? It may have been done before, but it's never been done by you. You're the person who can make this unique. And if you end up doing this exercise and you want to share your drawings or your notes or thoughts or ideas, please come back here and share them with us in the comments. And that can include links to your portfolio or links to your Instagram or wherever you love sharing your creative work. If you're someone who loves having conversations like this about movies, stories, television shows, and books, I would love to welcome you into Film and Paper Club. 
inside our members area. We have even more goodies, including film guides with discussion questions and trivia. We have snack and drink pairing guides that go with each of our featured films. You also get access to all of our community events and have the opportunity to discuss all of these stories that we love so much with other creative, smart people. Head over to members.filmandpaperclub.com for all of your options. Before you head out, if you loved this discussion, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss out on any of our new content. Next week, we're shifting into comfort stories and kicking off our series with the 1987 classic, The Princess Bride. I'll see you then. And scene.